Hey folks, it's Maxi here and welcome to another TEW 2020 episode. We are with Impact Wrestling and we are now on the road to Bound for Glory. It's been three weeks since I've done the last episode, so for me, I've had to have a wee look back, make sure that everything makes sense, there's a bit of storyline continuity, and hopefully we can make sure that the pay-per-view itself, when it does happen, is the best one possible. So, one wee bit of change to the schedule. Not really for you guys, as in the whole usual schedule on YouTube, but I've been back to basically taping all four shows in one night again. Just makes much more sense financially. So, as much as I'd love to just go weekly television, allow the game to flow a lot quicker, it is just so much more sensible for a long-term future. To continue in this method until we probably get to medium size. But we've got a, a stellar show today. We are on Axis TV, and this is this week's Impact Wrestling on Axis TV. So I decided to start tonight's show with the Impact World Champion, freshly retained, Ace Austin, and he's just talking about how that's Mark Cardona away out of his life. Doesn't need to worry about him. And he just says he is now going to be the main man around here. He's quickly interrupted by the matchmaker of Impact Wrestling, of course, Kurt Angle. And what Kurt Angle says is, it's good that you defended it, could you retain it, fair play. But we need to talk about Bound for Glory. We know that you, Ace Austin, are going to be in the main event and we need to give you the best match possible. So next week on Impact... We will see four of the top athletes in this company go head to head and they will battle out with the winner facing Ace Austin at Bound for Glory. Not too happy with it, Ace Austin is a little bit of a, a huff about it, but it's a good way to build up towards a really good main event. The idea I've got in place is really promising, so hopefully we can put that to fruition. So that'll be next episode when we have that matchup. And it gathers us a 70 rating, so there's not too much pressure on our main event matchup this evening. We start off with some fatal four way action in the knockouts division, and it was about to have a decent reaction from the crowd, but subpar wrestling as Jordan Grace took the victory over the debuting Venny, over Ram Chiacho, and Madison Rain in 8 minutes and 18 when Jordan Grace pinned Madison Rain with the fall. From Grace. I felt with this one it was a good opportunity to give the likes of Venny and Ram some spotlight and continue to get some momentum in the form of Jordan Grace. So a 43 rated victory there. She's the best performance with a 50. What I like is, although Venny not particularly over in the United States, did bring a 41 performance. After the matchup, we have a little promo from Jordan Grace. She talks about being screwed over at the last pay-per-view, screwed out of the championship and that she is going to be gunning for Taya Valkyrie because she wants that knockouts championship. 40 promo. We then have some action within our tag team division and it was a decent matchup that saw the champions FTR defeat Decay in non-title action and 707 when Cash Wheeler pinned Pavel Kirkin with the Shark Machine or the Big Rig. Weakling is Pavel Kirkin, so he's still slowly developing and getting some overness within the United States. And I was hoping that FTR could carry a good match out of him. A 55 is fairly respectable, and that was with Pavel Kirkin off his game in this matchup. For a small promo from Anthony Bones and Max Caster, they just say that, you know, they're, they're here in Empire Wrestling. They're hoping to make some moves, make some moves in the tag team division. Truthfully right now I'm not too sure what the tag team matchup is going to be, it could be some sort of multi-tag match at the moment because there is so many teams in Impact, but for now it's just a lot of them putting claims to be in that championship matchup. Also in the tag division we had a good matchup that saw the Inflictors of Pain defeat Violent by Design in 957. This was the main team of Violent by Design, bringing in Eric Young as well, and it saw Dinza. Pin Eric Young with a pump handle Death Valley bomb. 48 rated, uh, 58 rated matchup, sorry, and all four with pretty solid performances in both tag teams 
getting the tag team specialist bonus. So all wins there. Moving further ahead, we had a decent matchup that saw Taya Valkyrie and Fia Trinidad defeat the team of Ashley Vox and Demi Exo, the Team C-Stars in 851 with Taya the champion, picking up a win over Ashley Vox with a swinging side slam. This gal, the 48, so again not too bad there. 52 performance from Fia was very impressive. Just disappointing here that Ashley Vox was off her game and Delmi Exo has a gimmick that's getting stale. But I feel in that role putting over the champ and her friend, I was going to say manager, but no longer. Uh, yeah, does the job. We have a promo from EC3 and Johnny Dango, which gathered a 45, and EC3 said basically he was just sick and tired of Jeff Hardy coming in and stealing his spotlight. So it's better to do than bring in someone that he knows that can take the spotlight away from Jeff Hardy again. A few words from Johnny Dango and he just says, oh, well Jeff you're a bit of a weird chap. You do your whole face paint and all that. Well, I'm, I'm weird as well. I'm Johnny Dango. And he says, we'll see what happens when weirdness meets weirdness. Don't get me wrong, I actually really enjoy Well... I enjoyed the Johnny Carter stuff in NXT back in the day, as in after NXT season two, the basically his redemption arc with EC3 and Maxine was phenomenal. I, I really enjoyed just watching the batshit stuff they would do backstage. We then had the matchup with Johnny Dango in action, his I believe his TV debut, and he picks up the win over Rhino in ten eighteen with a flying leg drop. Only a 42 here, unfortunately this is due to the injury sustained by Rhino, which was a bruised pictorial muscle. Rhino with 52 performance to the disappointing 38 from Johnny Dango. And Johnny Dango got some heat. That's not good in your debut. Moose then cuts a promo on Luchasaurus. He says, Luchasaurus, you were not able to defeat me at... The pay per view, I can't even remember the last pay per view, as I think it was against the odds, but I don't even know, which is bad considering it's literally the last episode. But we move. So, Miss says here is next week, him and Luchasaurus are both part of that fatal four way matchup, and he's begging Luchasaurus to just stay the hell out of his way as he wants to become the number one contender for the belt. So, a 48 rated promo there. We then had X Division action as Suicide defeated Xperia in 10.09 by Pinfall. Suicide off his game, gathered a 41 rated matchup, so pretty good considering both these guys had next to no American overness at the start of the save, so the champ were good non title victory. This leads to the former champ coming out, the man of the hour, absolute Ricky Starks, and he just says that Suicide got lucky. He's still got some dates left on his Impact Wrestling contract. And he is going to invoke his rematch clause to defeat Suicide at Bound for Glory. So book that one in, Suicide Ricky Starks for the X Division Championship 44 promo. As we get ready for our main event now, EC3 gets some verbals from Jeff Hardy. Jeff Hardy just says it's a shame that EC3 just wants to continue to try and make Jeff Hardy's life hell but Jeff will always have a backup plan he's got the creatures of the night as well by his side and he will not stop it anyway before getting himself into championship contention 59 promo for Jeff Jeff was in the main event he took on all ego Ethan Page and it was a good match he had good eight heat and good wrestling we saw Jeff Hardy defeat Ethan Page in 12-29 with a swan tom bomb Actually, this matchup could have been far better. This was more so because of them not clicking to make it an awkward bout. So I'd probably say it would have been a 62, 63. That's the first time I've seen that. Jeff Hardy gritted his teeth and walked through his injury without it affecting the matchup. So we wouldn't have had a penalty for his bruised tailbone, which is unfortunate. It's a, it's a one day injury. Well, they've got working injured, so I suppose a wee bit. But a one day injury, and obviously we've got four tapings before Bound for Glory. So it'll be perfectly fine for that. But Jeff gets the win, Ethan Page heads to the back. We have a two-on-one beatdown by EC3 and Johnny Dango before making the save on a loan deal from AEW. Matt Hardy comes out, fights them both off, and EC3 and Johnny Dango head for the hills as the Hardys stand in the ring. 
50 rated segment, interestingly, even though he is making his debut in this instance for Impact Wrestling, but Matt Hardy's got a steel gimmick, so I might need to look at changing that, even though he's on and loan from AEW. But we finish the show with a 58 that increases our popularity in 34 regions, and as always, our show will appear worse because we don't have the money to increase our production values. But we set up a few things for Bound for Glory, and that's just the first show of four on the road to it. And yeah, you can see that it's a very even show with the promo at the start being the one that's just far better than the rest. So we are in a decent position as we continue to grow the company. So thank you very much for watching. Enjoy the rest of your day, and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.